How's it going? My name is Biffy and uh, I am going to make a video today talking about what you'll need for your ETX-70 uh, and astrophotography or terrestrial photography basically just to attach your DSLR to your Mead ETX-70 uh, telescope. Uh, this telescope is not like super powerful uh, especially for like astrophotography and uh, you know getting pictures of like constellations and stuff that's about all you'll be able to do is just get some nice pictures of stars and um, really really good pictures of the moon which I'll put up on the side there are just two things that you're gonna need which are relatively inexpensive um, for the sake of the video I tried uh, getting uh, these pieces to come separate but once they're together they are together I can't get this thing to come out now, the first thing that you'll need for your telescope on the back here you'll see right here there's this little knob or cap and you unscrew the cap and on the side there's this little switch where you can swap back and forth between the the diagonal eyepiece and uh, to where you can actually see through the telescope like from this angle so that's that's a really cool feature uh, I, I think that's really awesome that you know you can attach your camera easily to this it's it's pretty simple plug and play you know and also not to mention just kind of a review of this telescope it's got a uh, manual control so you don't have to adjust it yourself manually it's got uh, control buttons on here as well as uh, basically Carl Sagan built into this so uh, you get the remote control and you can input and do a planetary alignment where it'll it'll find Vega uh, you can point it towards Vega it's it's an easy way to set up and uh, it's pretty cool it's it, this is a decent telescope for starting out but not if you're wanting to see planets like Saturn or Mars or Jupiter uh, even just for looking through and not for a DSLR you can actually see those planets but very faintly you can't make out any definition of Mars but the moon is very astonishing to look at. You can see the craters very well, especially with the camera, which is, uh, if that's what you're wanting to do, you can take quality pictures of the moon and uh, constellations and stuff like that. So the first thing that you're going to need is what's called a T-adapter. It's a telescope adapter. It's uh, This is a Mead telescope. If you have like an ETX-90 or um, all the way up to 125, I believe, uh, yeah 125 uh, if you have an ETX 90 all the way up to 125 I believe that this will work I'm not hundred percent certain of that but I know for this and ETX lower than 70 it'll definitely do the trick because you have to have something to mount your camera to and that's where the second piece comes in and this is called the Mead Instruments T mount there's a difference in T adapter and T mount the T mount goes on to the adapter I've looked for ever a bunch of different videos on YouTube <laughs> and it's really complicated trying to listen to all these people talk about the focal length and you know the T-mounts and T-adapters and they get their words backwards when they say T-mount and T-adapter and I went and I accidentally bought uh, things that I didn't need for my telescope because uh, I couldn't find any quality videos or information on the internet if anybody else can that's awesome uh, but this I just decided to make a video because it was something that took me a minute to find out and figure out about so um, this is gonna have to be specific to your DSLR camera that you buy um, if you have a Canon that's what I have uh, it's gonna be specifically for the Canon EOS uh, it could be a T3 uh, it could be anything of the Canon EOS family of DSLRs to my knowledge that I know of if, if not then let me know down in the comments below so I can make some amendments to this video <laughs> Uh, and what that's going to do, once you get both of these parts together, this is, uh, this is the T-adapter uh, and the T-mount together. You can't really see the T-adapter um, specifically on its own because, like I said, I tried to get this thing out of here and it is stuck. <laughs> this piece on the outside, that is going to be the only thing that you're going to need to attach your camera to the T-adapter. Uh, so the way that it works is you unscrew that cap from the back of this and then you just pop this thing on and that's it and then your camera well, whatever camera you are using it has to be a DSLR I don't know if there's any other type of cameras that will work for this I just know that I have a DSLR and that's what I use so uh, any tips or anything leave them in the comments below all that good stuff so uh, just pop off whatever lens that you have on 
Uh, these cameras are interchangeable with their lenses, which is why this is really awesome. The thing about this one is um, it goes on upside down, which is kind of weird. Um, I don't know if there's a way to change that or not, but it doesn't really matter to me because these are all digital. I'm just going to upload them to my computer and I can change it in Photoshop or Lightroom myself later. So, uh, After you put that on, you need to switch your DSLR to manual mode. You can't really see it on the camera because I'm using a really crappy webcam so I could film this. But the top left, you want to turn it to manual mode. It has to be in manual mode in order to function from what I'm told. I haven't tried anything else, but uh, it seemed to work just fine. I think you could do a video as well, like if you're wanting to take video of the moon coming into frame and out of frame. But um, you'll want to do that. And then if you're wanting to do like pictures of constellations and stuff, uh, you, I'll probably make a separate video on long exposure photography. I'm still kind of learning a little bit more about that, but uh, it's really, really interesting. Uh, it's it's a lot to take in, and it's a lot of information. And I suggest you get to know your DSLR camera and your lenses and your telescope before you start doing all this, or else it's just going to be really overwhelming. So, uh, once you have your camera put onto this, uh, the T adapter and the T mount and all that. Uh, be sure that your um, your diagonal uh, knob here is turned to where you can see directly through the telescope. And then you just have to trim it out uh, pretty much. And then, like I said, it's only a 70 millimeter telescope, so it's not going to see that far. Uh, like, Mars will only show up like a, just a little tiny star and Saturn and Jupiter and all those things that you want to get pictures of. So, like I said earlier, this is pretty much just a terrestrial... Uh, telescope where you can take pictures of like landscapes and stuff from really far off like if you're bird watching or you want to take pictures of deers or something like that like that are kind of far off works really well for that and the moon the moon I got some really awesome images of super cool stuff and I just wanted to make this video because like I, I, I ordered pieces here that I thought I was supposed to have and um, like this this is a this is a T adapter for the ETX 90 through 125, and it fits just perfect. That's what that's where I was that's where I was screwing up because this fits on exactly the way you want it to, just like that one does. So, you know, I put it on here and I put on my camera and I was like, oh god, what's the what's the problem here? All I'm getting is blurry images, but it's all about the focal length. So. Your camera has to be pretty much right up on it if it's if it's within that focal length. Uh, there's all kinds of math equations and stuff that you can do for that. but um, And you need a completely different part for that. I'll list all of that down in the description below. Um, but I'm planning on posting more videos like this, uh, kind of giving tips and tricks that I know to kind of help you with your astrophotography and, you know, just cool stuff with telescopes because... I just recently got into it, and I've, I've wanted to do stuff like this, you know, for quite a while. So, uh, if you liked it, don't forget to press the like button, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys later.